Congratulations on the film. Um, I know that you're primarily um, a documentary filmmaker and a cinematographer. Um, how did you find this subject, um, you know, to make a to make a narrative film? And, and had you been wanting to make something in Yiddish? How did it all come together? I just wanted to get a lot of gray hairs. Uh, why did I do this? No, I um. I grew up in, in New York and New Jersey, and I've just always been fascinated by the Hasidic world. This is a people that at one point are part of the fabric of New York, but at the same point, they're removed. You know, um, they don't make eye contact with people who are secular. They don't engage. They purposefully have their own language and their own ambulances and their own security that is all removed. And um, I just knew I wanted to, to try something that was never been done before, and no one had ever made an all Yiddish film with real Hasidic Jews. And I felt I was up for that challenge. And so, how versed were you in Yiddish before taking on this project? Yeah, pr pretty minimal. Um, no, I heard my grandparents spoke it, and I, I learned Hebrew growing up, so I thought it would be easy. Very wrong. Um, and w for the story itself, I mean, this father and son story. Um, you know, do you have kids, or where where did where did the story come from? Um, it, and I guess on top of that, how close is the Manasha that we see on the screen, like the actor who plays him? So the story is based on Manasha's life. Um, when I was casting, I was looking for a non-actor. Because there's no, you call up um, LA and you ask for Yiddish speaking actors and no one is there. So I knew that to make a film in Yiddish, I had to get real Hasidic Jews. Um, and then I started um, doing casting tapes with them and just seeing what their acting abilities were like. And immediately I was captivated by Menasha, this um, Charlie Chaplin esque, you know, big clown of a man. But I felt this deep sadness inside him. And, um, I love looking at people who are broken. I mean, you know, there's enough beautiful people out there. I just want to see people. I, I want. To, I want to learn something from who they are. And then during the casting, which I was blown away by, um, he told me two details about his life: one that he was a widower, and two that his he lost custody of his son. So um, it was heartbreaking, and um, I, I wanted to make a film about. That. So the film is completely fictionalized. There. None of these moments happened in his life, but this is emotionally is based on what it felt like for him in the year after his wife's death. And how much input did he have on the script? And um, you know, did he Im did you give him freedom to improvise while you were shooting? What what was that relationship like? So my goal originally was to have everything improvised. I mean, me and Musa Saeed, a Muslim, which is wonderful. Actually, it's funny. Musa, Musa um, has made two fiction films. One of them won a bunch of awards at Sundance. But his, and they're all about Muslims. This is his first one about Jews, and his dad is more proud of his Jewish film than he is about Muslims, which is just kind of funny. But me and Musa put together um, this 50 scenes that Menashe was not part of the creation of that, just about what the film would be with some loose dialogue. And then we thought we were going to be able just to improv the film, but. Menasha was brilliant, Ruben the boy was brilliant, but many of the other actors just can't improv. Improving is its own skill. It's different than acting. Not every great actor can improv, not every great improvist can act. So me and Alex ended up having to write dialogue on set for the other actors. So I'd say in the end, 25% of the, of the script is improv, 75% is, is, is scripted. And is Menasha, does he have a passion for acting now? Does he want to pursue this? What, what is he doing now? So Menasha was, he claims, he was the first chassid to put a Yiddish clip on YouTube in 06, when YouTube first started. And this first clip got something like 50,000 views in a few weeks. Um, and his mom's like, Menasha, I heard there's a clip of you online and people are watching it. And he's like, I know, Mom, that's the idea. But he was pressured and he took it down. Um, 
after that happened. So now you can watch, like look up Menasha Lustig on YouTube and you'll see he does very kind of big, broad humor clips. They're all in Yiddish. You might not understand them, but I think you'll get the, get the gist of it. One of the best is he did for um, July 4th last year where he did the um, Star Spangled Banner. It's very funny. Um, and how about the Orthodox community in New York? Have they seen the film, and what has their reaction been? Yeah, this is going to be the most pirated film ever to be released in the Hasidic world because, you know, I've heard lots of different estimates. People say 20% of this community watch, will watch the movie. Other people say 80% will watch the movie. Um, no matter what, only 1% will actually show up in the theaters. So... One of those people will have their iPhone out and film it, and then it will be on the streets, you know. So it gets released on Friday. Sunday is, um, you know, not sh Sabbath. They'll be there. It could be there on Monday. You know, this is going to be on YouTube. So well, uh, tell your friends. All right, let's, uh, let's hear from the audience. Raise your hand, and we'll have a microphone come to you. So it's a question in the back on your left. Great film. I had one question. The scene, was that supposed to be La Bogmer when there was a, a fire setting during the film? It is. You are smarter than the Village Voice film critic, who now in their syndicate, in like probably 30 papers throughout the country, says it's Passover. So I'm happy you got it right. And just, you know, I made the whole film for that one scene. I had been at Lagba Omer many times throughout the years and was just blown away that in Brooklyn, you could have 40 streets completely closed down, you know, with pyrotechnics the size of, like, a Hollywood film and have so little protection for the people around it. Um, I went this past Lagba Omer and it was raining. It was just coming down, and I just saw them throwing more and more lighter fluid and oil on this. And because it was raining, it was very small, everyone was only in a few feet of this bonfire. And all of a sudden, they threw the match on it, and even though it was raining, it was And literally, it was a stampede. People were throwing the metal um, barricades everywhere. It, it, it was very terrifying. So we have a question here in the center. Uh, could you tell me why the people were speaking so fast in Yiddish that you couldn't understand what they were saying, especially in the beginning? Wait, if you speak Yiddish, raise your hand. You do? Uh, I do, yes. Okay. Uh, I'm just curious to know. So I think that's probably 5% of the crowd. That's pretty good. Um, I, that's how they speak. Uh, <laughs> Uh, that's why we only translate a small percentage of it, because if you translated every word, you would just be looking at the words on the bottom. I have another one over here on your left towards the back. The ending is uh, rather ambiguous. Uh, I wonder in real life what uh, uh, Menashe's uh, life has been like since. Yeah. So, yeah, I find the ending of this film very heartbreaking myself, but for Menashe, he always says, there isn't an ending yet. You know, my life is still um, to, to be determined. Um, he's looking for a wife still, and he's very easy to find on Facebook, so if you um, have ideas, Menashe Lustig on Facebook, he'd be very happy to hear from you. A, qu a question back here on your right. Yeah, I have a question about the filming in the streets on 13th Avenue. Good job. I'm very Give well, it up. I, Give it up. <laughs> uh, that was my home uh, for a good number of years, and I'm familiar with the neighborhood. What I was wondering was, did they know they were being filmed There's all, with all of the people walking on the streets? Uh, because I would never have imagined that that would be allowed. Yeah, we were very present. You can't hide a film crew. Um, I, this is a funny moment. Uh, we were filming this scene where after Menashe gets drunk and his son calls his brother-in-law, they're on the street, and Menashe, you know, tries to ask for forgiveness from his son. That night, we're on the street. 
we have lights out, we have cameras, we have boom poles, and a man walks up to Menashe and Ruben in this very intimate moment and says, Menashe, I have this box. Can you take it to Muncie for me tomorrow? I need it to go to my cousin. So I just loved that. Like, th there were detractors in the community who yelled at us and told us to get off the streets and said, don't film. But most people didn't care or were fascinated or didn't even know what we were doing, even though we were there. So there's this really is a naivety that exists on those streets. I have a question here in the center. Uh, the yurt site, I was counting. I, I just thought there had to be 10, but yep. was it a tight shot or what's the... What no, um, are, how many rabbis are in the audience? <laughs> One rabbi or no rabbis? No, no doctors? Um, you, don't need, you don't need 10. It's okay if you don't have it. But every, just so you know, Every line, every Jewish idea was gone through many, many experts. Like, we bent over backwards for authenticity and accuracy. So, I am not a, a Talmudic scholar. I don't know detailed ideas about Judaism, but every expert does who watch this movie, and I assure you, everything you're watching is authentic and correct to that society. I actually, I broke a chicken's face every time Ruben messed up acting. So the question over here on your far right. Joking, joking. I just want to congratulate you, Josh, on a remarkable achievement. It's a very sensitive, powerful film. Super enjoyed it. My question for you is, what did you learn about the Orthodox community from this project you didn't know before? You know, I get that question a lot. And the truth is, what didn't I learn? You know, before this film, I'd worked in documentaries and with my friends here, we went to the Philippines in Tagalo, and we, we worked in, in the Philippines. I've worked in India, I've worked in, in Uganda. So the truth is, is that when you make these films, I come about them with an ethnographic sensibility that everything is learning, and for me, cinema is about learning. So there's not one thing, you just learned what I learned. Everything you saw in this film, I had no idea when I started making this project. So um, it was actually endless. Okay, another question here in the center. Um, I love this film. It's one of my favorite ones at the festival so far. So I want to understand the custody that Wait, Menashe... Wait, tell me more. What? No, I'm <laughs> oh, yeah. Wonderful, no, I'm wonderful, joking, wonderful. Please. Thank you. I'm from Jersey. My mother speaks uh, Yiddish, by the way. Anyway, uh -huh. she's in Florida. But uh -huh. so the custody that Menasha lost, in, you know, in the, the real Menasha, um, is it like... Is it from just the Hasidic community or is it from like the court system yeah. that he lost yeah. custody? Totally. So just to so understand, there are over 40 Hasidic groups, okay? Even if you're part of one of these 40 groups, there are still different rabbis inside the group that can dictate laws. So they're not laws, they're just customs for that rabbi in that community. And inside that community, the rabbis wield enormous amounts of power. They can um, prevent you from getting um, benefits, you know, in terms of either food stamps or, or housing, they can prevent from where you work, and, and the most critically, they can prevent your kids from being in school and then the marriages they will receive one day. So um, there's all this very soft power that they have. So this Menashe's um, in real life, his struggle and the struggle in this film is about that soft power that the community wields amongst the people involved in that community. And, and this is, it can get to the actual court system. Actually, in Brooklyn, you could go to the actual courthouse and there's a Beit Dean, uh, um, which is a rabbinical court that exists inside the actual court system in New York. Um, so if you become on the shit list of the Orthodox community, it's endless for you. Okay, a question over here on your right. Hi, um, I speak Yiddish, and it was wonderful to see a film, a contemporary subject. Um, I was wondering if you're going to make any more in Yiddish. Just count me in to be there. Yeah, unfortunately, <laughs> I suffered too much making this film. The Surus I got, it was, it was once in a lifetime. Okay. I think we have time for one more question. Okay, over here on your far right. Hi, has Menashe's um, biological son seen this movie? Yeah, no, it's, it's a great question. And actually his biological son 
is 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 pretty religious and and doesn't want to watch the movie. But Menasha will um, if he if 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 his son wanted to see it, he would be happy to show it to him. And just so you know, when you go to YouTube, you should Google Menasha and his son or something like that, and you'll see. He does a couple really beautiful things with his actual son. You can see on YouTube that I copied for the film, which is just like he surprises him in funny ways, and it's so sweet and so endearing. So that's all the time we have. Thanks to Joshua again. <laughs> Thanks to you for coming. And the film opens. Yeah, so it opens July 28th in New York and L.A. Please tweet. Facebook your friends, and August 11th in SF. So please tell everybody to come out. It would mean the world to us. Thank you guys so much. Thanks again.